right, just another day in the field. Just came back from a uh, 5,500 square footer. They had like stucco and a heared stone veneer on it. And and it was it looked really nice, but I just don't understand. I know it's not the builder's fault, it's the technician's fault, but the lack of kick out flashing. I know y'all have heard me talk about it all the time, but that is the number one issue for stucco and a heared stone veneer. It, water gets behind the stucco and it rots out behind the stucco you won't even know what's happening until it's too late then you got to take it all down and then you put it all back up so just if you're a builder and you watch this look for the kick out flashing you'll save yourself and the company you work for thousands of dollars down the line and the headache of me calling it out or another home inspector calling it out because i'm pretty sure every home inspector calls it out and uh, if you don't know what it is i'll put some pictures here or here or here i don't know all three spots so you can see the way it's supposed to be done the way it was and then there's like the manual or something for it right there but anyways this home is like 1960s I don't know Tyler's in there he knows more about it than I do kind of sad but it's a nice little single story ranch brick home and I love inspecting these homes it is a little bit older so uh, you don't know what you're gonna find if they've replaced everything right but let's go check it out All right, we got a newer roof. It's looking pretty good. We noticed there's a little bit of pitting over there, uh, right over in this location where Tyler's about to walk. I stepped on it, it was solid. It's just by design, it looks like. So you always wanna pay attention to the penetration points. Uh, these are not very pretty. It looks like they have some sort of tar around them. So we'll report this up saying that there's old flash. Oops. There's old flashing with a new roof. You can see how it's rusted up a little bit. You know, it always gets me. They spend, you know, a few thousand dollars on a new roof and they don't spend a few hundred dollars on replacing the, uh, the jacks in the roof. So you always want to replace your, your flashing at the same time you do your roof because this is where the leaks are going to occur. Next thing uh, Tyler noticed is you can see along the ridge lines here, uh, you can see that there's a, a hump way over there on the back the back roof and you can kind of see there's some pitting here in the roof doesn't mean it's bad it is something that we need to pay attention to whenever we get in the attic space to make sure it's properly supported with purlins uh, and then this is an easy ride up over here you have a tree touching the roof you definitely want to bring that down because that's what damages the shingles but also it invites carpenter ants and wood destroying insects into your property one more thing you want to pay attention to is the type of underground plumbing that we have you can see that we have cast iron in place so that is a note that we want to make um, and then you can see over here they've done some sort of replacement and they have PVC over here so it's just some mental notes of what to expect whenever we see in the attic and what to report on for the underground drain line system all right, so we got a, a newer water heater here. It's a, what, 2019. 19. All right, so we got a few things wrong with the install. Uh, the first thing, starting up from the top to the bottom, you got the flue. It's not mechanically attached at the top. You also have a one inch clearance. You can't see it right here, but whenever we get in the attic space in a second, I'll uh, show it to you. I can see from over here, it's touching the sheetrock. We also have dissimilar metal, so they uh, didn't tie it in very well, and you're actually already starting to get the electrolysis forming right there, and uh, uh, you're getting some corrosion. So this will cause a water leak uh, throughout the system, and actually uh, electrolysis can happen through the entire pipe system. Some other minor call-outs. You have uh, a missing pan, too many elbows in the in the temperature pressure relief valve. And this temperature and pressure relief valve should actually terminate outside, not in the garage and six inches from the ground. Uh, pretty good looking water heater. The, the biggest thing is we just want to fix the one inch clearance and the, the dissimilar metals at the top of the water heater because this will cause issues down the line. Okay, so in the attic space, you could see where I was talking about right over here where you have the sheetrock touching the flue. So that 
you don't want this flue next to combustible materials because this gets very hot and can cause some issues. Uh, next thing is we do have some galvanized water lines and I'll show you the pipe I just pulled out of the the uh, attic space. I have like I collect broken things and this is this pipe actually looks okay. It might be the one they replaced, but the one in my truck I'll show you that one in a second. Uh, right over here. Uh, where they had the flues, where they had them all tarred up, you could see that we have some uh, staining, so a possible water leak area, but right now it's fixed temporarily with the uh, tar, but it is something that will write up that we have previous evidence of water. And then you can kind of see here the support system with the roof and it looks okay. And you can see they've replaced a lot of wood here. So I'm not really too concerned about those sags on the roof covering. So uh, let's me walk you around the exterior a bit. So right here, this is the pipe that I pulled out of the attic space. And this is that electrolysis that I'm talking about where the the water lines break down from the inside out and they start to create these pinholes and become very brittle and create water leaks in your in your attic space so this this will go into my inspection pile of treasures I would say because I collect all this stuff so I can show agents and home buyers how what we're actually talking about whenever they are purchasing their property or that we're not over exaggerating when we're talking about galvanized water lines and how they're going out across the city. All right, starting on the exterior, there's a few things that we'll call out here. We have a little bit of high soil and then we also have heavy foliage. We're gonna recommend to treat this area if they wanna keep this because this is a perfect area for termites. The next thing is, is uh, we will actually notify the buyer that the brick's been painted and it can cover up defects. We're not seeing anything too crazy here, but we do. We definitely want to uh, inform the client to just let them know that hey, that people can cover up things by painting brick. But I think they, I don't think these homeowners are doing that today. You really can tell the difference if they are, and you'll see it one day in my future videos. We'll report small stuff like this, uh, damaged bricks, caulking improvements around the garage door trim, and then also, you know, this looked like wood rot, but it's actually just uh, bubbling paint. So we will uh, just document that. It could have been previous from the previous old gutters because these gutters are, have obviously been replaced. That looks pretty good. So, but that wood is solid. We tested it. And then we'll document small little stuff like this, just mortar improvement around the home. And that's an easy repair. Also, broken um, handle to the hose bib. Pretty, pretty minor stuff. Coming into the garage, we thought we had some water intrusion around the door. And then as we looked at it a little closer, we noticed that we have uh, just a two by four sitting on the ground here. And it's soaking up all the moisture from the outside. So this is wood to ground contact and it's starting, to, it's gonna rot out eventually. So we're gonna report this for the client to be repaired. Uh, next few items while we're inspecting this uh, wood or fiber cement or this is actually wood wood is actually not too close to the ground it's enough off of the ground to be safe but you want to make sure that you kind of look underneath this area because this is an area where damage could be hidden and also again termites because we want to look where we have the wood to ground contact and the boards touching the ground i don't see anything in this area but you definitely want to be more diligent and take your time in this area uh, and then obviously the clean dryer vent and damage cover uh, that's an easy call out so out here, this, this wood siding I would say is a little closer than it needs to be. I would like to see at least the foundation beam. Uh, it is off the ground, that's just me being picky. But over here, you can see where they replaced this door and they put a window here. That uh, fiber cement needs to be off of uh, the hard surface. A minimum of, ooh, uh, brain fart, I'd say two inches. <laughs> I need to look it up. Uh, I believe it's two inches from flat work, four to six from soft ground. Um, loose, loose outlets and they need a seal behind them. And then uh, uh, we tested the sprinkler system. Easy, easy call out. And uh, let's walk around the exterior here. There wasn't much over here. Um, oh buddy, look at those. We had two train units 
I love train units. We almost never have these any problems with these. If uh, that technician is using train, typically they're good technicians. Uh, they spent the extra money. They got the better brand, and then also um, they're running real smooth. They're they're 2018 four-ton units. I love trains. I wish my house had one. <laughs> oh, the mine is a new build. I didn't have a choice. A uh, little bit of wood rot that goes in the termite section of our termite report. Uh, you want to replace that, and then the heavy foliage and the tree touching. We've already talked about that in the past. So, we also have some high soil here. I dug around in here. I didn't see anything, but you also want to pay attention on the other side to see if we have any moisture penetration inside the property. So. Uh, really good stuff on the exterior of the home, uh, but I'd say this is still pretty clean for the age. You see right there, you have the wood to ground contact, but it's still really, really nice. You know, pretty backyard too. I, I like this one. One more little minor thing, just missing uh, cover plates, weather cover plates. You want to replace this because that will damage your outlet and it'll stop working. Also can cause breakers to consistently trip too as well. We also reported this. This isn't plugged in and it's obviously older. We didn't know what it went to, but you don't want permanent use of extension cords. You can see it's already damaged, something chewing on it. And then uh, if we just don't wanna make sure they don't plug this in. So we'll identify it for them to let them know, hey, don't mess with this. Throw it, cut it off, throw it away or something, <laughs> you know. We'll do, we'll do. We always uh, respect the homeowner's wishes, so you want to make sure uh, that you just follow the rules. We like to wear booties and masks in. And I'm calling OSHA, standing on the top two of the ladder crooked. You're gonna... <laughs> you got anything good up there? Yeah. Oh, nice. What'd you got? Uh, open J box, gray ductwork. Um, this, duct, this gray ductwork is touching the, um, the blue pipe for the furnace. Mm -hmm and there's uh, more water stains, and they kind of just threw their blankets of insulation up here. Oh, so uh, the gray duck cork, is it falling apart? Uh, some spots it is. Yeah, it's falling apart. So uh, this side of the attic, we're obviously gonna write some stuff up. The uh, gray duck work in place, this is an older duct work system and it's known to have issues. So you can also see it's touching. So that easy area for it to condensate and cause water stains in the attic. So we're gonna report on that. And then also right here, you can see the spliced wires and open junction box. You also have um, the, you know, they just kind of threw the bat insulation in place over here. So we're gonna report it to say it needs to be re redistributed. And I wonder what this looks like on the infrared camera. What it looks like we'll we'll take a we'll take a peek and uh, um he said there was some water stains yeah and they have the water stains over here too so we know we have issues with the uh the lead pipes and we're gonna write that up to maybe recommend to replace them all okay okay yeah so in that home in that attic you can see that probably one of their I, I, you know those concerns really aren't that big you get that in most of these older homes it's just something that they need to take care of the biggest things on this property I would say is the the cast iron because we can't see underneath it so we're gonna recommend for a hydrostatic test or a sewer scope camera at the minimum to have them take a look at it and then also uh, the galvanized water lines we have some issues popping up you know we have previous evidence of repairs and then the corrosion around the water heaters so uh, missing insulation and all that other stuff that's really minor or even the exterior stuff that we find you know it, it is on the minor side we don't write minor in the report we just document it as is because you know to each their own whenever it comes to determining what's major and minor because what a little mortar repair could be extremely important to the client they don't want to mess with it at all so we just notify them what it is and then we go with that we'll still at the end of the inspection give them the list of threes we're like hey you want to fix those plumbing stacks you want to take a look at these galvanized water lines maybe get a quote to replace them to see if that's okay in the near future we don't spot any current leaks but it has gone out in the past and then we'll also uh, recommend for those that sewer scan to get done because home inspectors in Texas uh, don't typically do it because we can only go from the street 
I meant from the house to the street. We can't really look underneath the home because you need a plumber's license to remove a toilet. So, ah, that was a lot all at once. So, uh, that, you know, this is a really good one. You know, a good one. I found some stuff, but don't be concerned with that kind of stuff if you're buying an old home. Just expect to spend some money on maintenance. Okay, so this is uh, Chris's Chris Talk. I am in the per process of firing up the podcast. I just have to find the time in between starting up this stucco inspection business. But um, I am firing it back up. But one of the main questions I've been getting lately is how am I still marketing even though a lot of that face-to-face -face marketing is out. And I've always been marketing the same way. The only thing that I've changed is us not going into offices and the business flow hasn't really changed too much because they don't expect us to be in the office I guess but it's always social media you know I tell inspectors every day abuse social media and abusing is kind of relative you just post every day you know the fortune 500 companies they post at least two times a day and take that time just take a picture of a crack a broken water hose bib high soil and just take pictures of it put your brand on it and post it it's nothing special just go out there take the time post on social media so people see you and they'll be like Chris why only get like five likes it's five likes you wouldn't have got anyways and I think the rule of thumb is you need to meet five people a day anyways to have a successful business I read that in a book somewhere or touch five people don't touch five people you know what I mean <laughs> you meet five people a day and five likes is still I say that counts so uh, don't worry about the amount of likes you get. People see home inspection stuff, they just don't like it, but they see your brand all the time and that's all that matters. So um, that's Chris's Chris Talk. If you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, catch us on the next one. I post weekly. Thanks guys, bye.